Further, further off in him. Good morning. Good morning. I am seminary in Luther Cameron. This is, uh, I've been an internship, uh, I've been at an internship down in the Rio Grande Valley here for two months. This is my last Sunday here, and it's been such a blessing to be with you. Um, we, uh, we have been blessed to be at different congregations, but we started here um, at Port Isabel in June, and we're glad to finish here with you guys at the end of July. Um, we're going to start with our first hymn, hymn number what is it? 804. It'll be on the screens. <laughs>
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Turn to me and have mercy on me, as you always do those who love your name. If you kept a record of sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? We come before our Lord in repentance. that we are sinners. Our actions, words, and thoughts break your commands. We are self-serving, not God-serving. We do not trust that all things work together for good to us who love you. We are disobedient to your commands. Forgive us our sin for Jesus' sake. Amen. Through Christ Jesus, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. Lest the righteous stretch out their hands to do wrong. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good. And to those who are upright in their hearts. But to those who turn aside to their crooked ways. The Lord will lead away the evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever will be. Amen. Amen. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. Let us pray in peace to God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Grant your people peace and grace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For salvation wholeness, oneness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy.
by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your final judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here and dwell with you in perfect joy hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Follow with the reading. The Old Testament Testament readings is from from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 9. You are the people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured, treasured procession out of all the people who are on the face of the earth. It was not because you were more in numbers than any other people that the Lord yet set his love on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of the people. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping the oath that he swore to your fathers that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Know, therefore, that the Lord your God is God. The, fa- the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments for a thousand generations. This is the, this is the, 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 the it's the end of the reading anyhow. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I made a note and I couldn't read it. It was my problem in school, too. So uh, the epistle is from Romans chapter 8, verse 28 through uh, 39. We know for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn about among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn Christ? Who is to condemn Christ? Who who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as the sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 44th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and <coughs> sat down and sorted the good into containers but threw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, you exceed every strength. 
grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, this has really been a blessed time for us here in the Valley. We've been at churches from here to McAllen. We've been doing VBSs, service projects, um, all sorts of ways of ministries, and God is really at work in the Valley. Don't doubt that. His people are doing great work, and we have been blessed for the opportunity to see that and to be a part of that. And it's been busy. You know, we, we've gone to, I can't, I think six, maybe seven churches and, and been involved in many different places. It's been busy, one thing to the next. But this past week, we've had a little bit of a, a downtime. Slowed down a little bit. And what we like to do sometimes is watch movies. And so we pulled up Netflix, took an evening off, and watched a movie called White Noise. Now. I don't think my wife or daughter actually cared for the movie much at all. This is not necessarily a recommendation of the film, but a theme in the film was death. It was death. Both this husband and wife were scared of death. They were terrified. They knew it was coming, but they didn't know how to deal with that. That anxiety, it, it weighed on them, and they would argue at night. They would say, I, I want you to go first. No, I want you to go first. And no, it'd be better, it'd be better for the children, or whatever. And back and forth, and they were, it, it consumed them. It consumed the wife so much that she went to great lengths to get a, a drug that was called Dilar. It, this is all made up. It was called Dilar. It was supposed to help with the terror of death, with fear of death. It was supposed to treat that fear. Now, it didn't work. She still had great fear, but when her husband found out about this, he was upset at what lengths she went to get that, that, that pill, but he himself then went to try to get it himself. He too feared death, but the fears remained. And fears remain for us too. Let's, let, let's think, what are some fears? What are some fears that you guys have? I'm going to write, write a few down. I don't know. Hopefully you guys can see it. Um, what are some fears? I'll write, I'll write death. I'll start with that one. But what are some fears that you guys have, or that, or that, that people, people in America have? Carlin, what are some fears? Um, money. money, yeah, yeah, money's a big one. Money. What, are, what other fears? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for loved ones. Yes, loved ones. War, yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Especially with your, what's going on in Europe, uh, absolutely. Any other fears? What fears? Public speaking, Public speaking? that, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> separation. Oh, separation of family, okay, okay. I think I saw one in the back. Yeah? Yes, yes. Oh, pol yes. Politics and political. Yes, that stuff is uh, all over the place. Correctness. Uh, church. church? Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. People can feel afraid. They can feel judged in church. So I, I looked up. I looked up, um, what were the, uh, this was in 2022, so it's a year old, but what were some of the top fears in 2022, and you guys actually got a lot of them, um, you know, uh, po political correctness also put government corruption, that was a big one, um, that was actually number one, I was, uh, I was surprised, um, but, uh, um, but also like, like loved ones, what happens to loved ones, is there harm that might come to them? World War, World War was a big one. Um, but then even money for the future and safe drinking water, you know, safety. Um, I'm gonna say safe water. And I'll put mine from my childhood. I, I lived in St. Louis. There were no alligators or crocodiles anywhere to be seen. It, it was not a real fear 
but it was a fear that I had growing up that alligators or crocodiles would get me. And I would have nightmares about them. So I'm just gonna write that down. Um, <laughs> I, I hear you guys have some in, in the Bay Area here, so I'll, I will steer clear of that, but. <laughs> oh, spiders, yes, yes, no. So, okay, so we have a lot of fears here. Being alone, ooh, ooh, that is, that is really good. No, that, that. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well, yeah, no, it, it's there, and, and I think, I think it might be a part of it. I think it might be a part of it, because one, one thing that all of these are dealing with is a loss. So my fear of alligators, I was afraid I'd lose a limb. I was afraid it was gonna, or, or I'd lose my life even. Same thing with spiders. People aren't afraid of spiders because a spider's gonna take their job. They're afraid of spiders because it's going to bite them, they're gonna get sick, they might die, bad things might happen, they might lose time, they might lose health. Um, I, actually, I'll write health on here. That's a big one too. Um, even even political correctness, people, they're, they're, there's fear there because they might lose People might, uh, they might lose their reputation. They might lose uh, positions at work. Same thing, you know, war. We might lose our whole community to war. Um, separation of family, we might lose that love. They're all dealing with loss. And Paul talks about some words here in, in our, our readings in Romans. He, uh, he, he lists words like affliction, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, the sword. And these are all warnings for him. He's saying, you know, don't worry about these things. Or he's telling them, don't worry about these things. And the Romans might be saying, what are you talking about? They might be wondering, what on earth is Paul talking about? Affliction, danger, famine, nakedness? We live in the greatest city in the world. And Rome was great. It was, it was beautiful. It was one of the biggest cities in the world. And at that time, Christians were doing okay. Just three years earlier, this is in 57 AD, three years earlier, the Jewish Christians were allowed to return. They were allowed to come back to Rome. They had been exiled, but they were allowed to come back. Nero was, well, was in his, just his third year as a ruler, and he wasn't after them yet. They were viewed with suspicion because they were monotheistic. They just worshiped one God, but they weren't persecuted, at least not yet. And yet Paul quotes, Paul quotes in, uh, in Psalm 44, he says, because of you, this is a quote from Israel. So Israel was saying, because of you, because of you, God, we are being put to death all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. Paul tells this to the Romans. Because God is preparing them. He is preparing them. They might be doing okay at that moment. They might be living in peace in Rome at that moment. But in the very near future, not seven years from the time this letter was written, Rome would have a fire, and Nero would blame the Christians, and a great persecution would last throughout the rest of his reign. Now God is preparing us, too. As we listen to this list, this affliction, this distress, these persecutions, danger, the sword, <clears throat> but we're at peace. We don't have war on our footstep. The rule of law is, is mostly upheld in our country. We can expect restitution. We're allowed to worship openly. Christianity is still the dominant religion in our country. And I don't have to grow my own food. There is the miracle of the grocery store. It is really an amazing place. I can show up and food, fresh food, ripe food is available. I can buy it. I can even choose what I want to have. It's not whatever grew this year. I can decide what I would like. Would I like Mexican? Well, and the answer for the past two months has been, yeah, absolutely, yes, <laughs> yes, please. Um, I could have Italian, I could have Chinese, I could make all sorts of food, and it's all available. It's amazing. We live in an amazing time. But these words of Paul are not just for the Romans. They're for us right now. Our fears, as we listed here, these are not unfounded fears. There are wars. 
war in Europe. There are wars in Africa, wars in Asia that have been going on for a while. The threat of war is there. And as amazing as the grocery store is, there have been shortages for young mothers. Formula has gone, you know, fluctuated in availability. Eggs went, went skyrocketed in price for a moment when there, was, when there was a shortage of it. There was toilet paper shortages. And during COVID, these things that we rely on, they, 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 can, they can pinch. These fears are not unfounded. There is division in our country. There's even division in our church. And right now, this week, this weekend, our church, our synod is meeting. And I ask that you pray for it. Because there are divisions. There are people saying it's our side or it's their side. Things are coming. Bad times are coming. Bad times may already be here. And it's not an if. It's not an if those times come. It's a when. Those times are coming. And what's, good, what's God going to do? This is what he's going to do. God will work it all out for our ultimate good. That's verse 28. Verse 28, the very first verse of our Romans reading says, We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. All right. Work out ultimately for our good. In Jeremiah 29, we can let go of our fear. Jeremiah 29, the Lord says, I have plans to prosper you, to not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. We are predestined. And in our verse, it said, we are predestined and we are called. God has chosen us. Martin Luther said this is a wonderfully sweet thing for those who have the Spirit. And we have the Spirit, right? You love God, right? And this, this is where the devil will attack us in one of two ways. He will attack us with worry or uncertainty about our salvation. He will sow that self-doubt and he'll bring up your past failures, saying, did you really love God last week? What about when you did this? What about when you said that? The devil will, will bring all those things up. He might even go back years and say, you remember when you did that to that person? Do you remember what you were like? He will bring these things up. He will attack you. And so that predestination that you feel that God is, and that Martin Luther said, is, is a, wonderfully, a wonderful comfort. He will use it to say, well, it's a comfort for others, but not you. He will sow that self-doubt. He will drag you down. And he's not wrong. In some ways, we have hurt other people. We have disregarded God. Those sins are great. Now, the second way the devil will attack us in this moment, as we think about God predestining us and calling us, is arrogance. We'll say, well, yeah, I'm one of God's chosen people. Thank you very much. God blesses me for me. I'm saved. I'm fine. I'm chosen. And so I can live in comfort and luxury in any way I choose. But in that line of thinking, the devil is lulling us to sleep. We are supposed to be, as verse 29 said, conformed to the image of his son, following Christ in a life of self-sacrifice. And if we're honest, our lives are a long way off from following in Jesus' footsteps. We're more talk than action. Now, whether it's self-doubt or whether it's self-arrogance, the bottom line is we all are guilty. And in God's courtroom, we can't afford a lawyer. Our case is hopeless. We are defenseless. And this is where, this is where I believe all of these fears, they have their rational basis. These fears are not unfounded. There's that real fear of losing. And if we enter God's courtroom and we try to represent ourselves, God will ask, have you loved yourself more than me, more than God? Have you loved yourself more than others? Our answer is yes. Case closed. We lose. We will lose big time. But God is for us. First Timothy 2 verse 5 said, there is one mediator between God and humanity, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus himself offers to be our pro bono lawyer. The only lawyer who could stand up in God's courtroom. And he takes up our case. In verse 34 of our Romans reading, it said, Christ Jesus is at the right hand of God interceding for us. He 
He is standing beside us, pleading our case, speaking up for us. God is for us. 1 John 1 said, If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, and that is Christ Jesus. Jesus comes to our defense. He approaches the bench. He approaches the bench of the judge and works out a deal for us. God is for us. Facing charges with an eternal death sentence, minimum. The judge says, acquitted. You are free to go. You are free to go into my house. How is this possible? This is amazing. This is incredible. We're jumping around. It's, it's a great news. We can't believe it. But then we look and we see our lawyer, the really good one, the one who somehow got our charges dropped, the one we couldn't afford. He's offering his hands to be handcuffed. We see him get carried away to jail for us. We see him take the sentence, to take our sentence, our penalty, on himself for us. There's a song by the Newsboys. Um, it's, a, it's an old praise song. It's an old praise song. I, I'd be, please apologize if, if my singing isn't great, but it goes, Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, would die for me? I don't know, have you guys heard that one? Yes, no, that's God... That's God being for us, and God is for us, but that jail could not hold our defense lawyer. It could not hold our Savior. He burst the door off forever. We are justified. We are glorified through Jesus. God will grant us everything. God's love grants us eternal life. God is for us, and nothing can separate us from his love. Nothing. There's a whole list there. It's neither... Death, life, angels, rulers, present, the future, the powers, the heights, the depths, any created thing, nothing can separate us from God. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. We are blessed to follow Jesus. We are blessed to serve like Jesus. We are blessed to sacrifice like Jesus for those around us. 1 Peter 2, verse 9 said, We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, God's special possession. Why? Why are we? For what purpose? The second part of the verse answers this. It says that we may declare the praise of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, it's amazing what you have done for us. It's amazing that you have come to be here for us to come here to take our punishment, to clear us of all charges, to give us new life. Lord, I ask that you would strengthen our faith, that we may rest in this assurance, knowing that nothing can snatch us away from your love. I ask that you would help us to live boldly the life you have set before us, following Jesus, following his example. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise for the prayers. Who can separate us from the love of God? What can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Let our hearts now respond to such overwhelming love as we pray together in the Spirit. Lord, we pray that, that you will renew the merciful covenant that you made with us in love. We pray. Hear our prayer. That the ministers of the gospel may be people of genuine conversion and prophetic voice. 
and we pray especially for wisdom and guidance for the Fishers of Men Call Committee members as they look to call a minister and as, as they look to continue the worship and the, the ministry that is here at Fishers of Men. We pray, hear our prayer, that the bread of life may be shared one day by all Christians at a common table of praise. For this we pray, hear our prayer. For the poor of our world, and for the governments called to assist them in their need, especially the people living in fear and distress in Ukraine, Iraq, Malaysia, China, Nigeria, Turkey, Mexico, Syria, Syria, the Central African Republic, Afghanistan, for peace on our Rio Grande border, especially Reynosa, Rio Bravo, and Matamoros. All this we pray. Hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering in our world, especially Pastor Scott Jonas, Joe Gonzalez, Susan Schock, Bob Wheeler, Billy Ray Smith, Paul Cardiel, Tommy Neville, Bill Lubin, Carol Warren, Tyra, Shirley Butler, Kenneth Kaysen, June Brainerd Calloway, Bob Whitkey, Debbie Hebner, Ruthie Barr, Gloria Koch, John Delling, Irving and Marilyn Bohm, Jean Fleschnau, Mary McClung, Tom and Susan Bolton. We pray, hear our prayer. For the sick, for, for, the, for those preparing for baptism, that they may hear the invitation of God to come to the waters of regeneration and there find abundant life. We pray, hear our, hear our prayer. For the newly wedded couples in our community, for the expectant parents, and for those who nurture children, that all may be fed at the breast of a loving God and find strength in the life of his service. We pray. Hear our prayer. Let us be mindful of those who have gone before us, that they may come into the fullness of life, united with God in the communion of the faithful. We pray. Hear our prayer. Oh God, your loving care for us calls for our gratitude. Multiply once again your abundant mercy. Renew your covenant with us and let our hearts overflow with godly love for others. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord, now in the spirit and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, that receiving what you have promised, we may love what you have commanded. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. There's Bible study afterwards. We'll be glad to have you as we uh, talk more about, uh, about how God is with us. But go in peace. Serve the Lord.